I'll start uh, with witness statements. Uh, each group will have seven minutes. Uh, please go ahead, uh, Dr. Poon. Six minutes, please, or seven minutes, sorry. Thank you very much, Mr. Chair. Mr. Chair, my name is Dr. David Edward Uy Poon, the founder of the Faces of Advocacy. We are a grassroots Canadian organization of over 9.5 thousand members established to safely reunite families in Canada during the COVID-19 travel restrictions. From my understanding, we are directly responsible for the extended family travel exemptions announced on October 2nd, 2020. As Canadians brace for a second wave of COVID-19, government policies must ensure families are reunited and kept together in order to abate the shadow pandemic of a mental health crisis. These are the unedited statements from members suffering due to COVID-19 related family separation. Life doesn't feel worth living. Fixing it is out of my control. I don't know how long I can keep going. After 225 days apart and no history of mental health issues, my most recent panic attack was last night. As a healthcare provider, I have never fully understood addiction until the separation from my partner. The constant feelings of despair, hopelessness, sadness, and anxiety since March gave me this unwanted lesson. I cry. My son cries. He thinks it's his fault. 2020 is a rough year for all. Imagine going through it without your family. During our Faces of Advocacy Mental Health Index, we surveyed the mental health of over 1,200 of our members using validated clinical tools, showing a near doubling of suicidal self-harm thoughts due to COVID-19 related family separation. 60 to 70% of respondents showed moderate to severe symptoms of anxiety, depression, and or PTSD, where 49% of respondents had never been diagnosed with a mental illness prior to the family separations. Only 34% felt that they had adequate mental health support during the pandemic, and 84% responded that their mental health decreases the longer they are separated from their family. A coordinated federal strategy must be implemented for all Canadians, including permanent and temporary residents. Our briefing includes six recommendations. I will highlight four. Number one, Donna's rule. Donna McCall is a Canadian nurse and mother whose American children were not allowed into Canada as she died. She said goodbye to her children on FaceTime. The mental health sequelae of that moment spans a lifetime. Family reunification must be prioritized to protect the uh, mental health of Canadians. Um, this can be done through the Ministry of Health alongside IRCC, Public Safety and others to offer a reasonable path for family members to reunite at a time of crisis. Number two, the last goodbye protocol. There must be a federal guideline ensuring reasonable accommodations. Uh, excuse me, Dr. Before, Poon, could you yeah. slow down a bit? I think maybe My the apologies. translators have a have to keep up with you. So. <laughs> the last goodbye protocol. protocol. There must be federal guidelines ensuring reasonable accommodations for Canadian families to have an appropriate bedside presence. So even if families are allowed in the same city, hospitals do not have a uniform bedside process, particularly at the end of life. So in our briefing, we have the first-hand account of an ICU nurse detailing the mental health pains families go through from this lack of clarity at end of life. Provided that sufficient resources, such as personal protective equipment are available, hospitals must allow culturally sensitive and safe opportunities for some family to be present for critically ill patients. So the basic idea is during COVID, you had patients whose family were maybe in the hospital, but could not say goodbye to their family member. We have PPE now, we can educate patients on how to do so safely, but the mental health outcomes of, not, of not being there for a proper last rites ritual have long-standing repercussions and must be addressed for the mental health of Canadians moving forward through COVID. Number three, there must be a federal mandate for virtual care under the Canada Health Act. This would protect virtual or phone billing codes for primary care and mental health physicians to ensure accessibility, comprehensiveness, and portability of mental health care for Canadians. So this mandate must consider that physicians licensed to work in Canada may be displaced during the pandemic but are still able to provide virtual treatment. For example, a physician in Saskatchewan is able to call patients in Saskatchewan. If that physician is displaced during the pandemic and is in Ontario, that physician should still be able to call um, the Saskatchewan patients in order to provide care. This will ensure continuity and consistency with the Canada Health Act. So far, Saskatchewan uh, operates like that, but Ontario doesn't. So that is why there must be a federal mandate. Point number six on our recommendations are the end of the tunnel health strategies. So what we require is a federally mandated, federally managed national COVID-19 vaccine program. 
provincial distribution would be subject to possible inequitable distribu uh, distribution amongst the most vulnerable. When that is seen by members of Canadians, that can severely adversely affect mental health. We already see how mental health of Canadians deteriorates given that they see other people uh, flaunting public health guidelines or not following masking mandates. Imagine what will occur if there is not a transparent equitable process for a national COVID-19 vaccine program. Immunizations for COVID-19 when available must be equ equitably distributed at no cost. This includes the elderly and the immunocompromised. This must be paired with a modern countrywide surveillance system to ensure proper calculations of response and attack rates, immunity and outbreaks. The reason it is federal and not provincial is to ensure uh, transparency as well as consistency across the entire program. Now, the other part of the end of the tunnel health strategy is once COVID-19 testing is proven to be reasonably accurate, a federal inquiry into testing must be considered as a replacement for the 14-day quarantine. It is the largest barrier to family reunification at the moment, as some people are unable to take a full two weeks off to see their family member. A federal inquiry into the efficacy, usefulness of testing is, is needed. Family is essential in life and in death. COVID-19 forced to face mental health challenges in both. This briefing recommends strategies to reunite families safely, reasonably, and accommodate end-of-life reunification in a considerate manner, while simultaneously promoting and protecting mental health. Thank you, Mr. Chair.